BioWare, Visceral, EA Black Box. Long ago, these four studios lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when Electronic Arts attacked. Only Jesus himself could stop them. But when the industry needed him most, he was busy doing his taxes. Because the IRS don't care if you're a demigod, they're still coming for your fucking kneecaps. With the impending release of the Dead Space remake, I thought I'd revisit the original version before EA finishes molesting it with its greasy mitts. Like a trench coat pervert ready to expose his erect microtransaction to any who dare pass by. And yet, Yes, before you ask, I am saying that EA has a small peen power game, or a PP game for short, trademark pending. At least we could take solace in the fact that once the remake is released, Motive Studio shall be strangled to death for not raking in FIFA levels of microtransaction profits. Strangling aside, the original game is great, so until I'm inevitably triggered by Motive's bullshit, I shall continue to believe this to be the one true dead space because fire, water, air, dirt, how the fucking magnets work. Now, there's a proper order to things in my infantile mind, so if we are to do the story time on the dead space, then perhaps starting at the beginning of everything 65 million years ago in the Gulf of Mexico might be a bad idea. So with that in mind, I'm only gonna cover the game itself and not the metric fuck ton of lore the game has perched its fat ass upon. The year is 2508 and you are Isaac Clark, a 49 year old engineer who has lost contact with his thick ass girlfriend and joins the crew who have been chosen to investigate a stress signal sent by the USG Ishimura. Because of course, if the 1,332 crew members of the Ishimura can't fix whatever the fuck has crippled their asses, then the only logical solution is to send five more people in the starship equivalent of a Toyota Corolla. And oh boy, did they learn how fucked they are fast. Not even 10 minutes into the game and you already done fucked up. You crashed the car, two poor fuckers have been torn into fun-sized blood chunks, and the ship engineering equipment is telling you to shoot the limbs off of your enemies. We are 10 minutes into the game. Can you feel the fucks yet? No. Well then, the cornucopia of bullshit that comes next might change that because from here on out, your job is to go around like Handy Manny the spaceship dandy, fixing all the shit that keeps breaking like it's held together with duct tape and dental floss. Fix the tram line, Isaac. Fix the engine, Isaac. Fix the air, Isaac. Make his whole Oh, Isaac! Jesus Christ, ever heard of flex tape? Use some of that shit and get out of my face. I'm trying to find my thick ass girlfriend. Speaking of which, once you've trekked through a couple miles of broken glass and shattered dreams, you eventually bump into a long lost waifu Nicole down in the mining deck like the gold digger she is. And just like that, poof! She's gone like a summer breeze. Back to poon hunting, I guess. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Fix the comms array, Isaac. Kill the big boy, Isaac. Steal from the government, Isaac. Christ on a bike, Isaac. Do you really have to do whatever anyone fucking tells you to do? Like, some of them, sure. But the twitchy cultist who starts rambling about how you need to help him delivering a 20-ton emo art project to the world below because otherwise the current situation of fucked will continue? I'm starting to believe that the reason Isaac doesn't talk is just because he's a beta male cuck with no will of his own. Anyway, you decide to help the cultist in his endeavor by fixing up the ship, loading up his art onto his shiny new Toyota, preparing the ship for launch, and he's dead. Killed in his prime by man's greatest threat, a government certified woman. Luckily, your thick ass girlfriend is there to drag the Toyota and the art project back to the Ishimura. Now that you and your newly reunited wife who are together once more, you both decide to take a Sunday drive to the colony below to fulfill the cult boy's wishes in delivering his art project to a public viewing. But if there's one thing I know about an angry government certified woman, is that they don't take kindly to a public email occultist art project being seen by the masses. So she steals the project again and tells you that this whole time your thick ass girlfriend has in fact been your dead ass girlfriend from the very start. It's clear to you now of the very dangers that come from viewing cultist emo art projects and the suicidal thoughts that follow. With this newfound realization, you give chase upon the government woman only to find that she's been engaged in combat by the cultist's biggest fan. 
and he did not take kindly to her doing a fuck to the cult boy sensei and promptly tears her limb from fucking limb. Unfortunately for the fanboy, you just had a really shitty day and you decide to murderize its warty ass. Upon completing this feat, you decide it's time to leave and board the Toyota Corolla and now safe in your brand spanking new Toyota, you lament on past events and- Oh fucking Jesus Christ! Dead Space be having a grand old time with the mechanics section. With weapons galore and upgrades aplenty, the game gives you a large array of play to choose from and get fucked over by when you find out that your decision to buy every weapon just bottlenecked your ammo economy. And in my <coughs> professional opinion of 11 hours of playtime, carrying the plasma cutter for the big boys and the disc ripper for the small boys makes it easier to tear through the hordes of bullshit that's thrown at you. And by selling all the surplus ammo you have, you can easily amass a small fortune to spend on maxing out your gear by the halfway mark of the game. Because fuck your RNG dead space, I'll micromanage my backpack like a pro and fuck you down the middle of your intergluteal crease with my rock hard mid maxing. Moving on, the game has more atmosphere than a room of two internet porn addicts about to fuck for the first time. From the creaking ship to the creepy ass cultists doing things that would freak even a drugged up furry out, all the way to the vacuum space segments that cuts your ears out of the equation to leave you looking around faster than a Vietnam War veteran on the 4th of July. It's amazing how much crap they managed to stuff into this game to keep you on edge at all times, making even shopping stalls an unsafe place by not freezing time itself like many other developers would. And while we're on the topic of freezing time, the game comes with an entity slowing ability known as stasis. No, not that one, you fucks! Yes, the OG good stasis. Jesus Christ. The ability that was abused by me more than an AIDS-injected chimpanzee that was taken in by a drunken Peter officiary who is having a bad day. The ability is used throughout the game for puzzles and murdery alike, alongside its co-ability, literally telekinesis. Do you need me to explain that one for you? Look at the thingy, move with the mind. Ta-da! Now you too are equipped with the battle knowledge of a space magic wielding cunt with homicidal tendencies. You're welcome. Ah, dead space. You do know how to fondle a ball sack, don't you? One second I'm minding my own business, and another you scare me so hard that I empty an entire clip into a dead body because fuck you I wasn't ready yet! Dead space really do be the Elvis of modern day survival horror games, in that I got to do everything right and fucked at the same time. In the right, the game is immersive as all hell, drawing you into the game so much that walking into a large room is terrifying because you know full well that some shit's about to happen. As as well as the mechanics of this game being so unbelievably solid that I almost had a happy accident in my pants the moment I started writing this episode. But with all that said and done, the fucked part of the Elvis coin do be showing its head quite a bit. To all those who haven't played this game before, I must impart some advice upon you. Be paranoid. Be very, very paranoid. Twitch at the shadows. Shoot the dead bodies. Every time you save, make sure it is in a different save port to avoid getting your save soft locked by the fucking tentacles because you went in without any ammunition. Trust no one. Subscribe to my channel. Use the environment to your advantage. Comment down below. Thick waifu is temporary. My channel is eternal. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>